Hello everybody, this is Christian Pokemon Champion here with another video. How fast can you beat Pokemon Fire Red using only your starter? Now of course there are three total starters in this game. Cuff, cuff. So my man Bad Raptor Games invited me along with four other awesome dudes in figuring out which is truly the fastest starter. This will be our roster for today. Bad Raptor Games is on Bulbasaur. Grenisect is on Squirtle. Me on Charmander. Orantula on Pikachu. And a newcomer, Duster Dan, is on Eevee. Now, the rules. You know the normal stuff, so here you go. Moreover, we must keep the first form of our respective starters, so no evolving is allowed. As for the timer, the group decided on an in-game timer. This way, we can just focus on winning rather than training since we are using weaker Pokemon. In comparison, here are the stats each starter has so that you get a gist of what each competitor is working with. Some of these starters have more useful abilities than others. For instance, my Charmander's Blaze ought to be pretty nice. I'm just feeling sorry for Dusted Dan over here. Now, if you find yourself having fun during this video, please, if you wouldn't mind, help out the channel by liking the video. Also, once you finish, go ahead and check out the other four collaborators' videos. There's some pretty cool dudes. The videos will be in the description below. Now let's begin! As for starters... Sorry. I'm breaking my tradition by naming myself A as opposed to the normal Job Jr. to save on time. Thereafter, it's smart to put the speed text to fast, battle stain to off, and battle style to set. This will help out a lot. We then accept our challenge Pokemon Charmander, not giving them a nickname. Wait, no! I wanted to nickname him Kaido! The current main antagonist for my favorite anime, One Piece. Dig it! Water, 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 water. I guess I'll be renaming him later. I defeat a rival for the first time, and the only time while they were easy, you'll later see just how bad they become. Get your flying HM martyr and don't forget it! Now, while I was prepping for this challenge, I had to think about how I'll be dealing with the ground type gym leader Brock. And yes, they are a ground type gym leader. I'll fight anyone who says otherwise. Kaido can learn the steel type move Metal Claw, but they learn this at level 13, which will take up time. At first, I was thinking about opting out of this, though ultimately, I didn't think it was prudent. Didn't want to spend hours fighting Brock with a level 10 Charmander, you know? Now add Brock. Geodude loves using defense curls, so I spam Embers, a special move to avoid the defense buffs. On Onyx, I switched to Metal Claw, getting a lucky attack boost, while they missed the Rock Tomb. Another Metal Claw and a Rock Tomb hits its target this time, lowering my speed. The next one's a little crazy. Now that Onyx is faster, they miss their Rock Tomb yet again, and I crit my Metal Claw. Not gonna lie, when I practiced for Brock prior to starting the challenge, it took me several attempts while turboing, so winning on my second attempt was pretty epic. Right after the first gym, you can buy some pretty cool items at the Pokemart, more specifically Escape Rope, which will save a lot of time when I need to make it like Team Rocket and blast off again. Navigating my mood is a little rough, because you need to make sure you're not using too many moves, otherwise you'll be using Struggle. But once you're able to exit, there are these two move suiters that can help out the run by giving both Mega Punch and Mega Kick to Kaido, Mega Kick specifically having a power of 120. Unfortunately, despite these add-ons, I was most definitely not ready for Misty. So the level of Kaido, I decided to take out all the trainers on Route 24, along with the SS Anne. I'm not a fan of finishing SS Anne prior to Misty due to the time taken to travel back, but I needed just a little more strength to deal with Misty's water Pokemon. Now that we're back, Staryu and I go back and forth with me attacking, and them using hardening and recovering until their eventual fainting. Starmie is out, and as you can see, their water pulse almost destroys my Yonko. Beforehand, had I not leveled up, this attack was a guaranteed KO. Now that it is not, my Mega Kick, along with a crit, was able to win me this match after 82 tedious attempts. Thankfully, Lieutenant Search was significantly easier since Dig completely obliterates his entire team. Though, after five attempts due to Raichu spamming double team. That stinking cheater. I just hate people who depend on double team. I just hate it! I HATE IT! Not Dark Cave was annoying since getting a TM for Flash would have taken more time than it would have been worth. But once you get through it, blind, along with an 80% glitchless speedrun and taking down a crime syndicate, we are now up against the most difficult, the most horrendous gym leader of them all. JK, nah, all of Erica's Pokemon fainted to just flamethrower. Moving on, our next task is to go through the cemetery. But like a numbskull, I forgot to pick up the Silph Skull to skip Cubone's sad backstory. So I went back to Team Rocket's base I just ransacked, got the Silph Scope, all to save the old man. Hereafter, I traveled to the Safari Zone to get some potentially useful items, such as the TM for Sunny Day, the Gold Teeth, though that's more of a gross necessity for the story, the TM for Double Team, which I'll definitely not be using later on, and of course the HM for Surf, meaning we transition to our fifth gym. Coughing lost to a single flamethrower. I got a couple hits on Muck prior to being poisoned, which made me want to start over, but continuing on shouldn't hurt. The second coughing lost to my Mighty Flames, and... Weezing also lost to a single flamethrower as well. For real, I was expecting Koei to be another Misty, but they turned out to be a Lieutenant Surge. I mean, this only took me five attempts. By the way, this kind of becomes a pattern here on out. I'll win out of sheer luck that ought to have taken way more attempts. Then to compensate for this burst of luck, I'll soon be getting just the worst matches. I'll let you know when I get lucky or when I get wrecked. Anyway, skipping through Sofko and wasting several hours of my time dealing with my rival and subsequently Giovanni, mainly due to Kaido not being able to one-shot everything now, I used the escape rope that I mentioned like 
four minutes ago, saving time from going down the flights of stairs, meaning we are already ready for the next gym. Also, FYI, this is the pattern to get through Sabrina's gym without getting an aneurysm from getting lost. Top left, bottom left, then bottom right. Prior to knowing this, I've always hated this gym. Now, it's a breeze. Starting off our match, Kadabra lost to a thrower of flames. Mr. Mom was able to take the heat, so he was able to stay in the kitchen and get a berry up. Though I'm not really planning on using physical attacks anyway, so another took them out. Venomoth just kind of flew into the flames. But with Alakazam, their sidekick was a little scary. After a flaming hyper potion dance, instead of using a second sidekick leading to my loss, they instead went for future sight giving me the win on a first attempt. I'd say that was a lucky win because of the dumb AI, but maybe the future sight foresaw my eventual doom at the Elite Four. Eh. Either way, we swim to Cinnabar Island where we do the thing in the mansion and then probably forget to record me beating Blaine the first time which took me ultimately 12 attempts. Meaning I had to go back to the mansion, answer all these stinking questionnaires, and fight the dude once again. So here's how I defeated Blaine the second time. First things first, we stock up on Shadow Clones up until only Neji can find the real Kaido. And yes, it is from here on out where I depend almost entirely on Double Team to beat all my future opponents. Thereafter, a crit from a flamethrower took out the Growlithe, opponent that likes to use Bounce, so to lower the chances of getting hit, I used my digs on the right times until they eventually lost. Rabidash is ironically the only Pokemon Blaine has without the Flash Fire ability, meaning I'm forced to use either Dig or Mega Kick until I win. With Good Boy having the ability to intimidate and being the final Pokemon, I can ironically fight Fire with Fire. Though I gotta be careful of their roar, which will take away all my Shadow Clones immediately. After all that, we've won it yet again, but this time with 39 attempts, making a total of 51 attempts if you wanted to count the Numbskull attempts from before. There's really barely anything between Blaine and Giovanni, <coughs> so I made my way back to the Viridian Gym. For our final gym badge, I did make sure to start off with below one third of my Pokemon starter's health, applying their ability. Moreover, other than Giovanni's Nidoqueen, everyone was practically one-shotted, though I was forced to continue my dependency on Double Team to do so. While I did earn the W within 40 attempts, this was absurdly lucky, absurdly lucky since no attack ever made contact on Kaido throughout the entire match. Going through Victory Road, I make sure to pick up any useful items, such as the Dragon Claw TM and Rare Candies. In fact, I later make sure to scavenge any and all hidden Rare Candies around Kanto I can get my hands on. I'm gonna need as many levels as possible if I'm going to fight this Elite Four. Now that we're most definitely prepared for this match, let's make sure to become champion before the other competitors. Immediately I use my ultimate Shadow Clone Jutsu. Also for the rest of the Elite Four and the champion, just presume I copy and paste this strategy at the beginning of every match. For Lorelei, the attack that I bought from the mall at the Celadon City will also be pretty useful. Using a track basically halves the chances of Lorelei's Pokemon from hitting Kaido. And since Lorelei is a female, so too is her entire team. Anyway, Dugong was then fainted after three consecutive flamethrowers. Cloyster in one, a track not needed, though Lapras definitely needed some love. And thereafter, two flamethrowers didn't seem to take them past the healing range, leading to Lorelei using a full restore. This time instead, I went for a fire blast, with one more flamethrower melting their heart. Slowbro's ability oblivious prevents love. Dang, I'm really feeling sorry for Slowbro now. Thankfully, with this attempt, three consecutive fire blasts made contact painting them, and Jinx predictably lost to a single flamethrower. This was done on my 51st attempt. For Bruno, while fighting them, I kind of had a revelation. I'm probably going to fail this challenge without more PP healers. <laughs> PP. Well, I do have two elixirs in my bag. I thought that this wouldn't be enough to win with the level that Kaido was currently at. To test this hypothesis, I did go through 163 total attempts for just Bruno without an added elixir. And by the time I got the lance, again during my test runs, it wasn't looking good without at least one more elixir. It sucks, but I decided to go back to my last save point before I fought the Elite Four to go and find a couple more elixirs. It wastes time, but at least I can finish without extra training. Now that I'm back, I really am ready to fight Bruno. Not a whole lot of interesting things happened during the fight, other than Bruno randomly switching out his Machamp mid-punch. Notwithstanding Machamp, everyone else was KO'd via one or two attacks. This took, if you wanted to count the earlier test runs, 209 attempts. If not, it really only took 46 attempts. Agatha was a breeze. Not really too much to recount, just that it took me only 8 attempts to win. But I did notice that I've said the word now a total of 18 times in this script already, so it will now be my goal to not say now from now on. Now let's continue on to Lance. Wait. Dang it! Last up is Lance. With our guacamole, once they get a Dragon Rage or a Bite, which don't deal too much damage, he would almost always use Hyper Beam thereafter, which, after the damage done previously, is a KO 100% of the time. Unfortunately, due to the stubbornness of this AI, I'm not able to get Kaido's health to below one third, halting their ability from working, giving me a disadvantage. So I had to wait it out with my double teams until I faint them prior to Hyper Beam. Or, I suppose, until they switch out to Aerodactyl. Aerodactyl is a hard hitter, so I can't risk taking any damage from them. After them is the big and 
scary cuddly Dragonite. Dragonite is such a powerhouse that I made sure to mention that I got the TM for Dragon Claw in Victory Road. Without ever hitting me, Lance's biggest threat loses to four Dragon Claws. Guacamole is back and only a couple more attacks take them out. As Dragonair is out, my heart is definitely pounding. I'm only on a 1047 this round and I didn't expect to have gotten this far already. And to my surprise, this Dragonair and the following Dragonair both lose after only a few more Dragon Claws. This blew my mind how lucky I was this round. But just you wait. The true challenge of this video is finally here. Gary Gary Rival Elio, whatever your true name is, this man has caused your favorite paper bag crusader a lot of strife. By this time, it is apparent that I'm a hack and I'm using double team to win most of my battles since Blaine. But Elihu came prepared for my shenanigans. His first Pokemon Pidgeon has to move Aerial Ace, which is already a bear since I'm forced to take some sort of damage during the fight. But what's worse is their sand attack. The dude is copying my hack strat. Do you believe this guy? Nonetheless, Pidgeot still causes two more issues. Number one, if I try to use double team on Rhydon rather than a Pidgeot, Gary over here very frequently likes to switch his Pidgeot out to another Pokemon before I faint them. Normally this wouldn't be a big deal, but I must deal with Pidgeot right here. This is because even if I defeated every other Pokemon on his team, by the time I get to Pidgeot, since they're faster, they'll just finish off Kaido with a fast Aerial Ace before I can do anything to them. So I had to make sure to address this Pidgeot immediately. But even once I do, the second issue is that by the time I get to Rhydon, Kaido has already sustained some damage. Meaning while I spend the next 4-6 to six turns setting my Pokemon up, his Rhydon cannot hit me even once. Of course this is commonplace when you're utilizing double team, but normally I'd be boosting my evasiveness on the first Pokemon, so I'd be able to take at least one or two of their hits rather than the none here presently. Moreover, very likely I'll have maybe one or more sand attacks on Kaido, so I had to get through Rhydon, but then I had to deal with a very bulky and resistant Blastoise thereafter, with a chance of missing several of my attacks. And again, none of Gary's five Pokemon past Pidgeot can hit Kaido even once if I am to beat this challenge. I spent hours, I spent days even, I've become so numb. Oh no, CPC. You're not actually teasing that you're going to do a singing montage mid-battle, are you? Uh, yep. I've become so numb, I can't feel you there. Become so tight, so much more aware. I've becoming this, all I want to do is be more like me and be less like you. And I know I may end up failing to but I know you were just like me with someone disappointed in ya. I've become so numb, I can't feel you there. Become so tight, so much more aware. I'm becoming this, all I want to do is be more like me and be less like you. Ba 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 ba. Bam, 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 bam. I have finally slain the behemoth that is Blastoise, and Alakazam takes the helm. But a simple fire blast takes him down. Even Executor is no match for my dragon flames. Only good boy is left, and extreme speed misses. Use flamethrower. Another miss from good boy. Use your conqueror's hockey, Kaido. Okay, one last turn. Extreme speed. Much, much, much later. <sighs> okay, I'm back. Woo! Okay, it is the final turn. Again, Arcanine uses extreme speed and misses. All right, Kaido, send them to the Shadow Realm. That's right, I finally defeated my greatest rival of all time, and it only took me. 1,441 attempts. But all that's in the past! So Kaido was then made the Pirate King! Along with Tot, Bellsmart, Uhura, MC Hammer, Grooch, Taki, Jock, Joseph, Kitty Cow, Ekans, Coughing, Priceless, Purpose, Doug, Doug and Doug, Good Boy, Norman, IE Birds, The Explosion Squad, HD Arceus, Aaron, Breath, uh, Foot, T D Giratina, and Passive Squad. Wow, that's like my very best run yet! With an official game timer of... 3 hours and 31 minutes. I definitely made a few mistakes that added several minutes to my end time, but I'm pretty proud of it. And that's it. Oh, and I did rename Charmander to Kaido after the challenge. But that's old news. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please let me know. If you like my content, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click on that bell looking thing so that you don't miss anything from me. Lastly, if you have any prayers, please let me know. I've been noticing you people not sending your prayers in the comments. These are very important to me, so please let me know. And with that I say, 